What is up guys, DZ here, and today I have sort of a different video than I normally do, and this is gonna be a UDS Invitational retrospective video, and what I'm gonna do here is go through a bunch of the articles that they wrote throughout the past weekend, uh, especially the ones that I mentioned in or that I'm featured in, and kind of talk about like my experience just at this tournament in general. Some of the things that I mentioned in the deck profile will not be mentioned in this video, so make sure to go watch that if you haven't already. But I do wanna give some like more insight, specifically, especially on like the two feature matches that I played in round 10 and then top four uh, some people ask where you can find this information where you can find the feature matches it's just on the normal Yu-Gi-Oh website you go to events and then you scroll down and it says event coverage if you click any one of those links you're brought to this page where it has uh, all the event coverage for the CDS as well as every other event and then you can kind of go through and it's a little bit diff more difficult now that the event is over because you'll have to go through backwards but uh, you can get to the beginning and just kind of read through lots of fun feature matches lots of fun articles about tech options and uh, quick questions for players that I was uh, featuring in a few of those as well um, I first want to mention that when I started getting like tagged in things was around this round six top tables update at this point I was 6-0 or I guess it would have I would have been 5-0 at this point because round six I'm at table five and uh, this is when I a lot of people started tagging me or noticing that I was even doing well at this event that is even at this event at all and I think that this is really when it started when a lot of people were like oh DZ is at this event he's doing pretty good he's undefeated and also what's that he's not playing Salomon Great or Orcus or a Sky Striker or whatever, he's back to Altergeist and uh, that was kind of funny and there was some memes out of this and people were excited um, but I think really when it got big and when a lot of people started posting was the round 9 Saints. This is at the very end of day 1 and I finished 5th uh, in Swiss and this is when like so many memes started coming in so many messages started coming in because uh, at this point I was X1 so I went 8-1 in the first day my only loss was to Sky Strikers and and uh, this was like crazy for me, like uh, having such a good record in such a difficult event. At this point, I had played against so many insanely good players. I mean, almost every single round was against meta except for round two exactly. And it was just uh, so exciting. And basically, I knew at this point, a lot of people started messaging me and saying like, oh my gosh, you're going to top. It's, it's Win the belt. Go for it. But what's funny is that to me, I was just thinking like, I have to win. And I know it's, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like I have to win two out of the next four matches because even though uh, finishing fifth after day one is really really good and at a normal like YCS event this would be insane and you'd pretty much be guaranteed to top at this point uh, not quite I guess you could lose like every match but at this event in particular it was really hard because there is still four more rounds of Swiss 13 rounds of Swiss in this tournament so at this point it's like everyone's so excited for me and all I'm thinking is like what if I fail what if I lose every single match tomorrow what if I lose three matches tomorrow something along those lines and uh, that's really frustrating and I felt like if that had happened it would have been really sad um, unfortunately though for the people that wanted me to do bad because I saw a couple comments from people saying like oh you guys say that DZ is doing good now but I bet he'll just lose all the matches so uh, sorry to say for those people that I did in fact not do that I did not just scrub out and uh, I mean unfortunately for anyone that's a fan of me of course but unfortunately people that don't like me too much um, but then I came back to uh, round 10 which was the very first round the next day 9 in the morning and I had a feature match and I have a really really bad feature match record I think besides this one I'm like 1 in 6 so I guess 161 because I have one draw in a feature match and um, I wasn't super excited to get these I mean I know to a lot of people they're very exciting but I used to write feature matches so I'm very familiar with the formula so they kind of lost their like charm once I did so many feature matches myself just writing them um, they're still cool and they're still cool to show off like the the deck that you're playing and stuff but uh I was pretty nervous I was paired up against uh, Dominic Couch here he was the only undefeated there were five x1s and one undefeated so I was one of the uh, x1s that got paired up against him and that was pretty scary because he was playing like a really good deck he was playing a deck very similar to what Jesse Cotton was playing which was like Orcus Thunder with like Geismack or Gizmack whatever that card's called and uh, overall I mean you guys can go read through the future match um, it went well for me like for sure uh, his first turn play was activate dangerous snake uh, discard levy and ear and then set a monster pass uh, tribute set a monster pass and my hand was nuts let's see it it's crackdown ash blossom and permanent strike Moleseek drawing into judgment just the perfect hand and you know <laughs> I was just so happy when I saw that because I was like, okay, if there's any time, I mean, the big thing with Alter Geist, right, and this happened throughout the tournament multiple times, especially in day one, I didn't win a lot of die rolls, and uh, what happens then is, like, when you win a die roll, it's really good because you know that you can go first games one and three, but when you lose a die roll, it's kind of risky because if you lose game one and then win game two, game three, you're going second, and that's kind of scary, but so when your opponent bricks and you draw, like, an insane hand, that is, like, literally one of the most perfect hands, that's kind of how the deck was built, right? All the traps are really good going 
going first or second for the most part. And then you have just all really solid monsters, except for Sangin, that card sucks. Uh, but overall, this is like the perfect hand in this situation. But there could have been a lot of different traps that I could have drawn, a lot of different combination of cards that I could have drawn. But this is really good for me because if I can win game one and if I can secure the board and actually take that, that means that I still get to play game two and I'll be going second. That probably won't go too well for me. I mean, maybe it will if I draw the right hand traps. Um, but obviously, you'll see in a second, I really bricked in game two. But it means that in game three, I get to go first. So winning that game one when you lose the dice roll is huge in Alter Geist. Um, yeah, that first game went really well. He uh, just had a really bad hand. My hand was insane. Crackdown really secured the win there as well. And uh, game two doesn't go so well for me. I did draw a bunch of hand traps. Um, the problem was that I, I drew into more hand traps with my pot of extravagance, which uh, really sucked. Just didn't draw a monster. And that game was funny too, because I, I, ma <laughs> I managed to negate the LP three turns in a row, but I never quite drew a monster card. If I would have just drawn any monster card or personal spoofing, it just would have been so good for me. But I unfortunately did not do that. And uh, that was like one of the games where I started to realize that no material wasn't as good as I thought it was. Um, anecdotal evidence, of course, but I drew it off the extravagance really, really bad. It's basically useless in that situation if your opponent has already made like a combo. Um, even something like Valor is at least kind of useful because you can at least do something with it. But I made like a Link Creeper with it, which was not very good. Um, so he just kind of beat me down, didn't really matter. And then my, I never drew a monster. Um, game three, my hand is okay, but it does have an inspector border. And while the inspector border does not stay on the board for too much of the, the game, it definitely forces him to pass a bunch of turns in a row, which is really good for me. I amass a bunch of cards. And one of the things that I learned um, or that I took from like the, the YCS uh, Chicago, um, the, the my one of my losses in day one in that tournament was to uh, a deck that was playing Thunder cards. It was playing Danger. It wasn't quite like the Danger Thunder decks that we know nowadays, but it was sort of one of those types of decks. And remember, that was like the first event where Danger Thunder was like uh, people were really trying to experiment with it. But one of the things that happened is that I uh, I left the Inspector Border on the field for way too long. And while Inspector Border is very good, eventually they draw an out to it, right? So you need to actually have like cards available when they draw the out to it. And you need to be the aggressor. And one of the things that used to happen a lot is they would just set the Jackalope and you couldn't get over it except at 2,000 defense. Then they just tribute summon like uh, Thunder Dragon card. Uh, I know Roar has like 2,400 attack. Then they just uh, beat over the Inspector Border. Then you just lose because you have no cards. Um, so one of the things I took away from that is that you should actually be the aggressor when you have Inspector Border. So you'll see here at some point I uh, use a Mylusi to summon Link Kribo. So when you do that, both of you can now activate one monster effect. The good news is, is that uh, his deck really can't do anything with just that one monster effect. My deck can though, and that's really important. So uh, getting that one search does mean a lot. And it also means when he inevitably uh, outs the Inspector Border, I will actually have some follow-up plays, which is what ends up happening here. So I'm not going to say that the Inspector Border did not help this match, um, but I don't think I didn't necessarily just auto one because of it. It definitely did help slow down the game a lot and amass a bunch of card advantage, but uh, it wasn't on the board for uh, like the, there are some games you play this deck where like you summon the border turn one, your opponent just can't out it and you just beat them down four times in a row with the Inspector Border. This is not one of those matches, but it was uh, very good. So I was able to take that. So when I won that match, I was very excited because that meant that I only had to win one out of the next three matches in the tournament. And I didn't want to psych myself out, but I mean, because it's like, well, if I say that to enough people, then like I, I am jinxing myself, right? Every single match I'm going to play, I'm going to lose because I just told everyone, oh, I just need to win one more. Um, so they didn't really tell a lot of people that. And then here's a picture. They posted some pictures. They're doing a lot of like photography of this match, which is cool. But um, there I am in the bottom corner playing a feature match. Never seen a feature match. That's what it looks like. So you have uh, the writer next to whoever the, the main featured person is. If they're playing like an interesting deck or they're a named player. In this case, it was because I was playing Altergeist. And uh, there's not like a huge difference on which side, but whatever side the writer sits on is the, the side where they can actually see what's in their hand and face down. So that's kind of how that goes. Um, a lot of times, though, you try to grab feature matches with two players that are really important. So in this case, you have the undefeated person and you have the Altergeist player or whatever. Then you also uh, have your own dedicated judge at the table. That judge's job is not only to ask or answer ruling questions, but also to keep track of time because you're on your own clock. And then also stop the clock when uh, the feature match right needs to catch up or take any pictures or whatever. So that's kind of what that looks like. And that was sort of off to the side. Um, and then this is the one I won a couple matches more. I mean, I, I won the next two matches. So I won one match and then I was like, okay, I'm pretty much secured, but I didn't want to risk it. And then I won the next match. And like, okay, now I'm like actually secured for top 16. Uh, in the last round, which is just sort of a formality, I played against a Salminger player. He uh, really got me with a really good sequence of plays where he uh, he made Hida to bring back my Ash Blossom. I used my Lucy to kill the Hida, and then uh, on my his on his turn, I summoned Multi Faker. He ashed the effect, and then he mind controlled the 
multi-faker and then made Mirage Stalio because um, now he had multi-fakers level 3 and then Ash Blossom level 3 make uh, the Mirage Stalio and that was really really cool um, props to him for playing the mind control in that very unique situation um, these are the top 16 uh, pictures and that's that's pretty cool I didn't know what was happening at this point I saw that my picture was getting taken I wasn't really sure if they're taking a picture of the board so I wasn't even thinking they were taking a picture of me um, and what was funny too is at this point I am like I don't know if you can like tell in this picture but I am I am so dumb with Kami this is like just minutes after I received that game loss and I was still like really fired up about that so I was like I am not posing for this picture I refuse but it, it's okay <laughs> it's fine I cooled down uh, I think that this was in the the start of game one so I or game it wasn't actually game one it was game two because I got the game one loss and I think this was right when it started and I was just like so angry but then uh, after I won game two I was feeling a lot better and then obviously when I won the match I was feeling really good but that was sort where that comes from so if i look pissed in that picture it's because i was kind of heated up about getting the game one loss in top 16 um and that brings us to top four so top four did not go my way i uh this was an opponent that i played against oh i should mention real quick if we can go back to this i i was just looking at this and uh, i've played let's see i i as far as the top 16 goes i played against in swiss uh one two three four uh five six of those guys so of the top 16 players i played against six of them and i guess i can't count myself so of the top 15 players that weren't me i played against six of them i think that just goes to show that uh, <laughs> a lot of these people i was like one of their only losses because uh, to make it in this event there were no x1s at the end of swiss but there were a few x2s and there were a, a bunch of x3s so a lot of these people they only had three losses and i was one of those losses so it was good to know that like the people that i was beating were uh, pretty good opponents because they were able to make it to top 16 which was pretty exciting as well um, but for the feature match, um, I think that this just kind of went good for me in the first game. I drew uh, a pretty crazy hand, and I, I'd played this guy in Swiss before. This was uh, I beat him in Swiss. This is my round 11 opponent, and um, I, I drew like a pretty crazy hand in the first game. I was able to sort of just beat him down with the silk, with the double uh, copies of silk. Um, there was a time when I was considering consolidating them into a Hextia, but I just figured it wasn't worth it. Um, this deck, when your opponent has very few cards, you don't really want to consolidate your cards to have less advantage you just want to have as many cards as possible so that's kind of what i was doing um and then game two man my hand was bad i'm pretty sure it didn't even matter that he had the call by the grave because my hand <laughs> my hand was uh it was like ash blossom silk mulaseek marionetter marionetter it was really really unplayable no trap cards no hand trap sides ash blossom um so even if he didn't have the call by the grave there he still would have like probably comboed off pretty hard depending if he just had like any one extender um so i definitely was not winning that game ever maybe if i went first i would have been able to but even and then probably not but i mean it would have been at least trying if it, if i would have went first and maybe drew like one trap card instead of like one of those cards i probably could have got it but not going second definitely not um and then comes game three and i'm just like okay this is there's a lot on the line here and uh i think throughout most of this i i make decent enough plays um some people have said i mean right afterwards um avery he told me he's like well why didn't you just sell him judgment the normal summon of the dark Greffer? the reason is is that like it's so scary when because i had no monsters at that point and if you uh i don't know i was so afraid of just like uh Psalm between dark reference and then just getting beat down because he had like I, he could have had like an extender in hand I don't, I don't know um maybe i just like mistracked which extenders he had used already but i was very worried about just getting like beat down like that um and then what ended up happening is i made a very serious misplay um as i've uh it's been a day now it's been uh, over 24 hours and i i don't think it was as big of a misplay as i think it was but there was a safer line so the setup here if you haven't read this feature match is that uh, we both have almost no cards he has a dark reffer on board i had and he has a dark reffer on board one card in hand that's been sitting in his hand for like a really really long time and what I do is uh, I have a spoofing on board, a protocol on board, and a, an inspector border in hand. Um, so I'm thinking like, okay, how do I, and I'm only at 1600 life points exactly, so I'm at really low life points. I'm just like, okay, it, I had this brain fart. I use the protocol, I or I, I use the spoofing, I shovel back the protocol, and I'm just like, okay, what do I do here? And I was like, my first instinct, grab Mulaseek. And I was like, that's really risky because Mulaseek only has 500 attack. And it's like, I can summon the Mulaseek and I can attack directly, I can kill the Greffer, but if he has like anything else, I'm just, I'm 
I'm just dead because I don't have any trap cards other than the spoofing on board, which is already face up. So I was like, well, I can't summon the multifigure. That's like a big problem. And I was like, oh, I can grab Mary Netter and then set Manifestation. And then I can revive the other Mary Netter. That gives me some defense. And I was like, man, that's like no effect negations. That's like really scary. And somehow I like totally blanked on the fact that the play is so obvious. The obvious play is that you add Mary Netter, you summon Mary Netter, you set protocol. And then when he draws, you use spoofing on the Mary Netter to add multifaker and then flip protocol and special multifaker, special silk. That gives you so much defense. It's just really, really solid. And I don't know why. I, I just was, it was such a long day, um, long two days, 13 rounds of Swiss, and then top 16, top eight, and now we're on top four. So much pressure, so many people watching. I just I just blanked. So I just added a little seek, and I just normal summon Inspector Border, attacked with a Dark Greffer, and then he draws a uh, red layer, and he uh, special summons a red. Well, the red layer actually might have been sitting in his hand for a while. I think he, he drew the, um, I think he drew the autonomous action unit. So he had, he special summons red layer, activates autonomous action unit, and then that he has a 1600 attack guy on board. So crash the red layer into the inspector border. I'm at exactly 1600. The uh, Mary Netter takes me out. Um, I would like to mention though that, yeah, like I said, I think this play wasn't nearly as bad as I made it sound in my profile as I made it sound after the fact, because yes, it's true that he drew red layer and that he drew his one of autonomous action unit. But it's like, I, I think my play in a vast majority of situations still wins the game. It just wasn't the safest play. Worth mentioning though, that if I would have made the other play, if he would have drawn Ash Blossom for turn, I, I would have probably lost that game, right? So it's like this play loses to maybe this, what, what ended up happening, but the other play loses to Ash Blossom. I don't know. I think that the other play was more secure. If I played like this exact same turn a thousand times and we just kept having him draw different cards, I think I would win more often if I, if I had done the other play instead of the inspector border play, but I just had a total brain fart and it was funny. Well, funny. I was actually really sad, but as soon as I scooped, I, uh, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so stupid because I realized like the multi faker play. Um, and it was just like, I ah, just, I, when I was thinking about, all I was thinking when I was resolving the spoofing was that, okay, Mulsey can grab Faker or Mary Netter can grab a trap. I wasn't putting together that you can grab Mary Netter, grab a trap, and then grab a multi faker on the opponent's turn. I don't know why, I just wasn't thinking about that. So that's what happened there. Um, the last article that I was mentioned here, let's uh, go over real quick. Is this my deck profile? A couple people messaged me about this. I didn't write this profile. It is missing uh, all of the um, solemn judgments in the trap uh, section here, so it's missing that. So just that's the only card that's missing in the whole main extra side, at least to my knowledge. Not really a huge write up here, and this really surprised me because uh, Konami usually doesn't post articles about deck lists, and mine was posted before like anyone else's, and there was like a 30 minute gap before anyone else's went up, and it was just kind of I, I was I had already recorded the deck profile. I hadn't edited it and a lot needed to be edited out just to make it even shorter. I know it's like a 20 minute video, but I cut some stuff out to make it a little bit shorter. And uh, I was just sort of like taken aback because I was like, okay, if I knew that I was going to get uploaded, like, and this was like on my way home, if I knew this was going to happen, I would have uh, stayed at the hotel and uploaded my deck profile just for you guys to see. Um, maybe record it in a way where it doesn't need to be edited and just sort of upload it. And then it wouldn't have like a good thumbnail, but at least it'd be up there. Uh, luckily, though, at least the time of filming this doesn't look like it's actually really affecting the views. You guys are like killing it you really like the alter guys profile so that's exciting but this did sort of surprise me um luckily though they they did eventually update all of the other top four i mean look at how many articles <laughs> there's uh you have my and then i don't know it doesn't really show like the the time posted here i don't think yeah it doesn't show the time posted but it definitely was like at least 30 minutes between my article getting posted and the rest of them getting posted so i was like what's going on there um but yeah that's how the uds went i guess that's sort of some more background information if you guys are curious about that really fun event really fun for my first premiere top getting it with my favorite deck in the game alter guys i just love this deck so much and uh, i i felt bad for people that looked at this list and saw that i was playing sangin or like oh i gotta buy sangin because uh, hopefully you watch my profile or follow my twitter because sangin is garbage and i've said that enough but i just i want to make sure no one makes the same mistake that i do and uh buys like the turbo pack sangin which is what i did it was like 20 bucks and i the card just sucks so i <laughs> don't don't do that it's a bad idea maybe someone will figure out a way to uh, make use of it better than i could but i mean i know the use for it i just don't think it's that good but uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this discussion video, this add-on video from the deck profile, sort of like a continuation of that going into more detail about some of the articles written. Uh, I will link a, uh, what I'll, I'll put a link in the description for the Konami blog if you want to read like my feature matches, whatever. Otherwise, you can just go to the normal Yu-Gi-Oh site and find it there. I'll see you later though. Thank you so much for the support. Goodbye.